Now this has been fucking wonderful. I don't know what to say, man. I don't even want this night to end. I promise you, whoever cares the most, I care at least as much as them. I know what I got, because I lost it all. I got to tell you something, and I don't talk about it often. Have you ever worked all your life for something and have it not work out? Yeah. That happened to me. It was tough. Think about it. I was gone for 12 years. It's not a little bit of time. It was hell. I watched other niggas that I knew become very famous. I watched the world go on without me. I mourned the loss of it. And after a while, I didn't care. Coming back was terrifying. I understand what I am. I really do, more than anybody. Like when they write about me in history, I'll, I'll be dead reading it like, yeah, I know they'd say that. <laughs> said that a person can't dream of a face they've never seen. Can't believe that's true. But it's probably true. Boy, I got a long bank of faces. 32 years, I could close my eyes. I could think of any night. There's so many faces. Every night, most nights, they're all looking up, smiling. <laughs> you have no idea what the world looks like from there. All different races, all different colors, all different kind of beliefs, just looking at me, smiling for 32 years, night after night. <sighs> <laughs> no comedian take that for granted. I swear to God, this might be the noblest of professions. Robin Williams had a bar that I loved. He said comedy is the only job you can have where you can use everything you know. And that's true. You can use more than you know. You can use what you think. Use it. Don't be afraid. Don't let these bitch ass niggas button your lip. <laughs> Say it anyway. I first became aware of Dave Chappelle right around before the first study professor. Because I was supposed to play that role that he played. And then I kind of saw him, and I was like, hey, that guy right, that kid, that kid would be funny playing that role. I try to be peaceful, but now it's time for Reggie to karateize your way. Woo! Dave is so much smarter than everyone. Like, Dave is one of the most, maybe the most intellectual comedian ever. It took us 400 years to figure out as a people that white people's weakness the whole time was kneeling during their national anthem. <laughs> That's a brittle spirit. That's right, nigga. On the rock, it's regular. Ah! Ah! What are you doing, nigga? Stand up! He stretched the art form and uh, his impact on the culture. Uh, he is the voice of his generation, without question. Nobody's even close to him. Thinking? No, I've had to learn, and that's where um, Dave Chappelle was um, has been a wonderful friend and mentor. What did Chappelle say to you that helped you with that? Chappelle said to me, we were we were um, doing a show at uh, Radio City together. It was during his run, right? And I was on, I was on one of the shows, and he said to me, I said, man, I, like, what am I going to tell these? Because I was like, I'm going to do comedy before Dave Chappelle. I was like, Dave, uh -huh. what am I even doing here? <laughs> And Dave That's said, great. and I said, I don't even know if I'm funny enough to be here. I said, you're nice. And I think I'm a really funny guy, but what am I doing here? And Dave said, look, man, he said, you don't understand something. He said, you're not here because you're funny. He says, I know a hundred funny motherfuckers out there. He said, you're here because you're interesting. And he said, anyone can be funny. Not everybody can be interesting. Not everyone can make an audience listen to what they're saying. Not everyone has a wealth of life experience that makes people want to know what they have in their minds. And so that changed my perspective on silence. And so now, if I can hear that an audience is listening, I'm engaged. Well, that is a great piece of advice, not only for comics, but for, for anybody. Right. Because, wow, the thing that I love about Chappelle, and you just identified it is, 
he will go. He's interesting. And he is an interesting he's the guy. Most, he's the most interesting man I've ever met. That's, that's yeah, that's what makes Dave Chappelle. People, many people are funny. There's a lot of funny stand-up comedians all over the world. Yes. But what makes Dave Chappelle Dave Chappelle is that he is interesting. It's how he sees the world between the jokes. But all jokes aside, Ken Spacey shouldn't have done that shit to that kid. He's 14 years old and was forced to carry a grown man's secret for 30 years. Jesus Christ, he must have been busting at the seams with that one. The saddest part is, if he were able to carry that secret for six more months, I would get to know how House of Cards ends. <laughs> I loved was, um, I can't believe that I've been in this business long enough that we're like the older guys now. It always blows my mind that I'm like five years older than Dave Chappelle because he was already a made guy when I came in. So I always look at him like he's got 10 years on me, you know, or 15. And, you know, just when I watch his act, I'm like, this guy's clearly been doing this a good couple of decades longer than me. And the reality is I think he's only been doing it like six years longer than I have or something like that. He's fucking amazing. And what I love, too, is just... He's that same, um, with all that's changed, everybody getting offended, all of this fucking crap, how you get in trouble, he hasn't changed at all. He's just like that same guy that I saw way back in the day when I used to go to the Boston Comedy Club and watch him go on at like two in the morning and just start murdering at two in the fucking morning. And I remember he's always sit there going, how, the, how do you do that? How are you that funny at two in the morning in front of a crowd that gave up on the show like an hour ago and they're tired and they just want to go home. That second he steps on stage, boom, he just like, he just starts fucking killing. Dave's a beast. Dave's a beast, man. That's the only man, only man that puts a little fear in my heart. I'm like, okay. It's real. What's he doing? Do you watch him? Do you oh, watch totally. him? totally. You study? Totally. Totally. I got the, I got, I got Chappelle, I got an app, I follow him. I'm like, you know, my man P Prince Paul always says, competition keeps you in condition. True. You know? So, yeah, that's, that's my man right there. The other real special shout-out I got to make, because none of this would have been possible on any level uh, without this person, is my mother. Mom. My mother. Mom, 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 mom. You have no idea what I put this woman through. <laughs> if you had just given birth to me, that would have been more than enough. But the fact that she raised me and raised me well, we had a real oral tradition in our house. I knew the word griot when I was a little boy. A griot was a person in Africa who was charged with keeping the stories of the village. Everyone would tell Grio the stories and they would remember them all so that they could tell future generations. And when they got old, they'd tell them to someone else. And they say in Africa, when a Grio dies, it's like a library was burnt down. And my mother used to tell me, before I ever thought about doing comedy, she said, you should be a Grio. And she'd fill me with every story of black life. You know, she's educated in African-American studies. And she would let me understand the context that I was being raised in. That I'm being raised in a hostile environment that I have to tame. By the time I was 14 years old, I was in nightclubs, mastering an adult world. It was terrifying. The crack epidemic was going on, and my mother would hear gunshots outside and be scared to death. Maybe it's my son. But early in my career, you remember, Mom, you used to sit in the club with me. She'd do a full day of work. You'd be back there falling asleep, just waiting for me to go on. She would watch my show every night. Do you know how long that car ride is home? <laughs> how many of you have ever heard your mother say, pussy jokes were a little too much tonight, son? <laughs> I was a soft kid. I was sensitive, I'd cry easy, and I would be scared to fist fight. And my mother used to tell me this thing, I don't even know if you remember, but you said this to me more than once. You said, son, sometimes you have to be a lion so you can be the lamb you really are. 
I talk this shit like a lion. I'm not afraid of any of you. When it comes word to word, I will gab with the best of them just so I can chill and be me. And that's why I love my art form, because I understand every practitioner of it, whether I agree with them or not, I know where they're coming from. They want to be heard. They got something to say. There's something they notice. They just want to be understood. Love this genre. It saved my life. 